Good afternoon, QA engineers, and those who are planning to become one soon. Jira is the most popular bug tracking and a project management system in the entire world. And they have just released a newest update for the user interface. So I wanted to update our video and show you guys how to use Jira and mainly how to file professional bug reports this year. But I will do it only for those kind of folks who will hit this big fat thumb up button below, subscribe to our channel and also follow the Instagram and the Telegram communities, links to which you can find right here. Now, let me quickly introduce myself if you are new here and then we're gonna get started. My name is Sergey Kromchenko and I'm a software QA engineer, lead manager and a senior engineering manager of SDAT in the past. But these days, I'm helping people like you to become a QA engineer from scratch or to improve your existing skills. Now, let's get started. Now, let's create a bug report. First of all, let's go to the website we are going to be testing. It's going to be Codemify. We're going to scroll down and click Codemify.com. And then let's say we're going to be testing this website and we do know that whenever we click on any button that says try intro week on our website, it should take us to this page where you will have a choice between the manual and the automation introduction weeks. And the URL for it is slash intro. But now I'm going to go to a different page and this will be, let's see, I believe there will be reviews. I will go to reviews. I'll scroll all the way down, check a lot of reviews from people on the YouTube who, work, who worked in McDonald's, then became QA engineers. And at the bottom, I see the same button, right? Try intro week. I will click it, but then I will be redirected to, redirected to a different page, which is called pretty much an introduction week for the manual QA because the, here's the price for it, $20. We do know that this is a direct pretty much direct link with this URL one week web 20 for an intro course for $20. But we were supposed to navigate to this page right here, slash intro. So this is a bug. And I'm going to go to Jira and I will open up one of our students projects. Let me just select a random project. Okay, that works. And I'm going to create a bug report. Now, by the way, this is a new interface for, of Jira. They have recently updated it. And now you can see that it's not as familiar as it was before, but no worries, I will walk you through. So we have a board right here. Now the menu is on the middle of the screen. It's located horizontally. Previously, it was on the left side, right below the other menu items where we could go through all of the, all of the options that we have right here. For now, we have summary, where you can see pretty much a dashboard with all of the activities that it's mostly will be used by project managers, QA managers, etc. To see a summary or to see different stats. Majority of QA engineers will look into number one backlog to see all of the tickets that are currently in the sprint and there are in a backlog or should be taken, taken care of in the future. But for now, and the most important part of our QA game in Jira is a board. And that's the place where you will see to do column in progress in QA or done. And we're going to click on create and we will create a new bug report. You can see that you're selecting a project right here and we're gonna select it in this project. By the way, thank you, Oksana, for letting us use our project. If you did, let us use it and I'm going to select a type of ticket. By the way, if you are interested to become a software QA engineer from scratch to improve your existing skills, or learn how to build AI from scratch or AI workflow, I'm running quite a lot of courses, and some of them are for one, one week where you can learn basics of it, you can learn how to answer basic interview questions, and even get an internship in a US-based startup for a whole week. The links for those courses are right below this video. You can, there are multiple types of tickets, and I hope you are familiar with those, but I'll quickly walk you through. Number one, task. A task is a pretty much a request from the team, some of the team members, like product owners or project managers, to create a new feature or to update something. It's a task, right? So usually those are created by product owners for developers based on a customer's feedback or requests. There's also a bug or a bug report. 
It's called work tie, but it's actually a ticket type. And all of those are called tickets. So pretty much it's a unique format, but there are different types of tickets. It could be a bug, it could be a story where we describe a user's story and the developer would implement new tasks based on those user stories. Or it could also be an epic, but we're not going to dig into it. Let's just select a bug. And our bug was that, let's go through it again. So that was in reviews. And when we scroll all the way down, so clicking try intro week takes us to manual intro week course instead of the instead of the page with the two courses so that's kind of the challenging one to come up with a title so let's do that summary or a title should answer three main questions what happened where it happened and under which circumstances so first of all incorrect redirection redirection upon upon clicking try intro quick on reviews page i think this would be the best description of it in my opinion you guys let me know if you could come up with a better one because we all we're all human some of us can come up with the more logical ones than the others no pressure but i think this is pretty solid so what happened incorrect redirection so what happened where it happened we specify right here reviews page and under which circumstances upon clicking try intro week on reviews page i think it's a solid one now do we have any prerequisites prerequisites so we don't have to have an existing account on a website right so there are no prerequisites so we're just going to say to say na no prerequisites then steps to reproduce work number one navigate to and we can give a direct link of the reviews page right so people wouldn't waste their time so this will help them to save their precious time navigate to this page scroll all the way down Let's see i think that's the case right we gotta scroll all the way down yep and click try intro week button click and then we're gonna specify so click yellow try intro week button click the yellow try intro week button and then we're gonna have expected result actually first we're going to have actual result what are we actually getting actual result we are getting user has been redirected to manual intro week or landing page and by the way we should probably provide a url right that'll be the best so developer would know the exact page it were directed for okay so that's the actual result and we're going to yeah let's just leave it that way and then expect the result the user has been redirected to I think to the one that we have on the main page. Try intro week. This one. And by the way, guys, these are introduction weeks into world of QA. So if you're interested to try it on your own with us, with the mentorship for the whole week, you can click on one of those buttons and pick up the topic that you want to learn. Do you want to make an attempt to learn for a week to learn basics of it? So you could understand if you actually like it or not. All right, and I'm going to go back here user has been redirected to this exactly but this is not it we will need to assign a developer let's say let's say Farouk should is our software developer he is working on that part of the page so we will specify him as an assignee to this ticket and a QA engineer let's imagine that 
I am a QA engineer and I will put my name there. Sergey Kromchenko. Labels, any labels. If there is a specific version of the application and you do know, you might apply that version. And let's imagine we have a version 107 and I will, I will specify there. Priority. So what priority is it? And actually you should know the difference between priority and severity. And by the way, severity is not, not included in this project. So we're going to only include priority. Priority is how fast this issue should be fixed. Severity is how bad or impactful it is. A lot of you guys did ask me, how can I improve my English as I was not born in the US or England or any other English speaking countries. And what I decided to do is to open up a new YouTube channel, especially for you guys. You can find a link for it right here. I do travel, I do travel a lot and I do share a lot of tips and tricks. So if you want to learn English in a fun way, simply follow this video right here. Let's continue. And let's think, what priority should we set? Since reviews page is kind of one of the pages not a lot of people will usually go to, and it's located all the way at the end, next to Ruslan who worked at Apple, I would say it's not the, definitely not the highest priority. It's not, it's not a blocker. Is it, so not the highest, not high. It's also not lowest because people should have a choice between two courses, not just going directly into one. So I will probably stick between low and a medium. And let's logically think what, what's the difference between those. Low priority is something very insignificant, but it's not just like a pixel that we have to, we have to move to the left or to the right. A medium priority is something a little more significant and in our case i would say since we don't have many bugs on our website and by the way guys you let me know if we do have many bugs i will probably need i will probably set it to medium priority because for me as the product owner and owner of this website i think it is pretty important for users to have a choice between manual and automation introduction weeks so they could select one that they like otherwise the company might actually face some some financial issues because people will not see Automation Introduction Week and they will not sign up for it. So that's pretty important and that's why I'm going to stick to the medium. Parent. There are, there are no parents for this ticket. Affected version, as I've mentioned, I've specified version there. It looks like we have a separate ticket, separate field for effects version, so we can also specify it. Um, and, but I don't see, since this was a dummy version, dummy label right here, I'm going to specify the version and let's say we do have the latest version which is 4.10 fixed. That's the latest one, so I will specify that one. Team. Select a team who works on it. So we don't have specific teams, so we're going to leave it empty, but if you're working with the team across the ocean, most likely you will have multiple teams on your project and you might assign specific one. Sprint. This is very important, guys. Whenever you're creating bug report, if you don't include an active sprint, just like this one, it, the ticket will go to the backlog, it will not go to the current sprint. If you want developers to see it right now and fix it ASAP, you should include the current active sprint. If not, simply don't include anything and it will automatically fall into backlog, which I will not do because I want it to be fixed. For example, story point estimate, this will be taken care of during the sprint planning meeting, so I'm not going to fill that one out and the rest of them are not important at this moment so i think we should create it and but before that we should also add a screenshot so let me let me show that page one more time let me get to that page one more time and verify and actually take a screenshot oops number one we should take a screenshot of the button we've clicked on so it would be easier for dev to understand and make sure to include URL the way I am including it right here. So we're going to take a screenshot of this page and we're going to take a screenshot of that page. So we would create an excellent looking bug report. All right, we did take two screenshots. Now let's add them up. So we can click here, screenshot one, screenshot two. I'm going to 
and I'm going to drop them into this bug report. Let's actually create it first and then I'll drop it into it. So it should appear right here and right there. So I'm going to click it and then I'll just drop those two screenshots into bug report. All right, one of the things we could have improved here is whenever we took this screenshot right here, we should have added the arrow. So I'll click on this one, I'll click on edit. And by the way, this is the basic functionality on the Mac and then I'll select arrow. And then I will say that, hey, this is the one or just like this. So developer could see that this is the button we've clicked on. And whenever I took the second screenshot, we could have shown the URL specifically. So I'm going to edit it, put a, put a pretty square around it. I'm going to move it so we could highlight it. And then I will also add an arrow. On one side, you can say, are, aren't they, are they dumb or what? Why do you have to do that? But make sure to do your best. There is something called CYA, which stands for cover your ass. And if you want to make sure that you will have no issues in the future, you should always do your best and upload screenshots with arrows. Pretty much think of it, whenever you create a bug report, think of it that developer that will look into it is a psychopath that lives next door to you. So you better create an excellent looking bug report so no one would ever have questions. And you could also specify your environment here by adding the browser you've used, the Mac version you've used, and in case you've seen this in a specific browser version and not in the other ones.